tabernacle. I want to give you this word. I want to give you this scripture. We're going to pray in just a minute, and then you can be seated. But this stand, if you would, the reading this two verses. We're going to talk about that in Exodus chapter 25. Exodus chapter 25, verse 31 and 32. We're going to be talking about the golden candlestick or the golden lampstand today. Praise the Lord. But if you look at Exodus chapter 25, verse 31 and 32, it says this, And you shall make a candlestick of pure gold, or a lampstand of pure gold. Of beaten work shall the candlestick be made. His shaft, his branches, his bowls, his knobs, and his flowers shall be of the same. Verse 32 says, And six branches shall come out of the sides of it. Three branches of the lampstand out of the one side, three branches of the lampstand out of the other side. Father, I thank you right now for your goodness, your mercy, your grace. Father, I'm asking that you would use this vessel for your glory. Lord, I ask that you would quicken your word in my spirit, that I might break your word down, that we could receive your word in simplicity, Father, that it would fall upon good ground, Father, from the smallest child to the oldest adult, that everyone here today at the sound of my voice have understanding of your word in the name of Jesus. Father, I ask that you would anoint every ear, every heart right now, that that word would penetrate, Father, that it would get down on the good ground, that it would bring forth a fruit, a fruit that is a lasting fruit, Father. Lord, not a fleeting fruit, Father, but a fruit that is lasting unto eternal life. And Lord, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor in the name of Jesus. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. Can you give the Lord one more big old clap of praise for you? Praise the Lord. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Woo. My Lord just seeing that picture gets me excited. Y'all praise God. Those who can be seated, praise the Lord. I'm like Stan, yo. I really get excited too about speaking on the tabernacle. Right? It's such an honor. I, I just thank God that He's allowed me to speak on on the tabernacle, even to preach and speak His word. The Bible says, "Blessed are the feet of those who preach the gospel." So I'm blessed. We're all blessed here today. Say, "I'm blessed." Look at your neighbor. Say, "You blessed." Come on, look at somebody. Say, "You blessed." You are blessed. We are blessed here today, y'all. We're blessed because the word is fixing to come forth. Somebody help me up in here. We're blessed because the word of God is coming forth. Amen. Not man's word, but God's word. There's a big difference between man's word and God's word, church. Come on. A big difference. Man's word will tell you anything. God's word has to line up right here. This is it. Genesis Revelation, it's his word. Y'all, you know we've been talking about the tabernacle in the wilderness. And we know, we pointed this out, I'm not going to go back to a lot of stuff, but we know that the tabernacle, even as a whole, the whole tabernacle represents Jesus. And it represents us in Jesus, the believer. And we're even going to see that more clearly today with the teaching of the golden uh, lampstand or the golden candlestick. Every piece of article in that tabernacle, we've already come through about, uh, quite a few, and we've got about three more to go. But every article of furniture in that tabernacle, every article even represents Jesus. And we'll see that even today too more clearly. Can I get an amen? amen? I told Dave, I said, you know, I, I love teaching all this tabernacle, but man, I'm wanting to preach too. So I've got to get a little preaching in with my teaching because I just love to preach, amen? But i got to teach too because it's not no good for me just to preach it all the time that we don't really get nothing. Amen. Come on, I love to preach and I love to get excited and I love to move and shout and do, but that word is so powerful, church. See, the word of God is what we have really got to get a hunger for and get an understanding for, Amen. It's the word that is so powerful. But let's go ahead and look at this teaching. Uh, first of all, you can't see it in this picture, and that's fine. we got one. But the golden lampstand, we know, was a symbol of a person. And that person is who? Jesus. It's Jesus. Praise God. Even John 9, 5 says this. John 9, 5 says, I am the light of the world. Jesus is the light of the world. Can I get amen on there? We're even going to dig in that to it in a little bit. But it stood on the south side of the holy place. This uh, lampstand, this golden lampstand or golden candlestick, it stood in the holy place. Not the holy of holies, but the holy place. We know the tabernacle is divided into two places, the holy place and the holy of holies. We haven't got into the holy of holies yet. But it stood on the south side of the holy place. It was opposite the table of shoe bread, okay? And in between it was the altar of incense. And in fact, the altar of incense is where, where, where we're going next after this, next Sunday. And I am really excited about that. Somebody help me up in here. 
We're going to look at some stuff on that altar of incense. Amen. It's exciting. Praise God. But I want you to see this and understand this. There was no other light in the tabernacle. Now just think about that for a minute. This is the only light in the tabernacle. Now, if you, I want you to know this too. There were no windows in the tabernacle. There's windows in this church we can see out and light can shine in. But there was something, oh, praise God, there's another one we can see it now, amen. I want you to see that there were no windows in the tabernacle, so there was no other light that could come in. And that's going to be an important part in just a minute, okay? There was no other ray of light, no other ray of light, y'all, was allowed to come from the outside into the tabernacle. Think about that for a minute. Lord, I'd be glad we get back to preaching and teaching the Word of God and nothing but the Word of God. I'm so tired of people's opinions. I'm so tired of hearing people's opinion. Well, you could do this and this happen. Where'd you get that at? Line it up with the Word. Show me in the Word of God. Now we've got to get back to preaching the unadulterated Word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. The only light, y'all, that lit the tabernacle came from this golden candlestick. Now we have the lampstand, okay, and we have the light. And both, the, the, the light coming from the candle, the, the lampstand, both, y'all, point to Jesus. And it points also to the written word of God and the two being inseparable. You didn't separate the light from the lampstand. And you cannot separate the word of God, the written word of God, from the Word of God, from Jesus. They're inseparable. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. And you can see it plainly when you talk about the lampstand and the light that's, uh, that's shining, okay? So you cannot separate God from His Word. Jesus is the Word, amen? amen. He is the Word, all right? Are we on the same page? Somebody help me up in here. Psalms 119, 105 says this. Psalms 119, 105. Thy Word is a lamp to my feet and they light it to my path. The word of God is powerful, church. The word of God moves mountains. You ain't moving the mountain. God's word is. Come on. We're not moving mountains. God's word is what we believe. The faith we have in his word and what he says. I believe what God says, period. It don't matter. If God said it, I believe it. If God said it, I receive it. If God said it and he says, son, I want you to speak it, I speak it. Come on, somebody help me up in here. If God gives you a word, you speak that word. There's power in the word. There's power when you speak that word. I don't care if you see it at that time. Continue to speak it until God does what he says he's going to do. Because I promise you, he will will do it. I believe Jesus is coming back. I ain't seen him come yet, but guess what? I know he's on the way. I know he's coming. There's no doubt in my mind that Jesus is coming back. So I say, thank you, Lord. I give him praise for coming back. Come on, church, because I know he's coming. Hallelujah. That's what you got to do with the word of God. When God gives your word, just believe it and just speak it until he manifests it. Amen. Can I get an amen up in here? Amen. Lord, help me. I'm trying not to preach. I want to teach you, but I can't help it. Outside, listen to me. What this tells us about the word being a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, it tells us that believers, we are to walk. Now listen to me, church. This is important because people don't want to do this. We are to walk. As believers, we are to walk only by the light of God's word. Let me say that one more time. We are to walk by the light of God's word. We're going to hit some stuff today, y'all. We're not to walk on the light of man's understanding or man's teaching if it's not lining up with God's word. Can I get another amen? Now, outside the tabernacle, you have the light of nature. Outside these walls, y'all, we have the light of nature. We've got the sun shining. At night, you've got the moon shining. You've got all kind of things outside, okay? But And outside the light of God's word, now listen to this. This is important right here, what I'm going to say. Outside of the light of God's word, in other words, if you're trusting in anything else or you're being enlightened by anything else but by God's word, you have the light of human reason, of human philosophy, and human speculation. And I promise you there's a lot of that mess going on today. 
because nobody wants to really preach and teach the Word of God. Nobody wants to get up here and tell you that there really is a hell and there is a heaven. And I promise you, as sure as I'm standing here, y'all, if we're not saved and born again and God don't birth you into the kingdom, you're going to hell and not to heaven. And that ain't popular today, is it? But that's the truth. And when the Spirit of the living God comes in, guess what? He brings a change in us. Amen. We become a new. We become a new creature. Amen. Old things pass away. Y'all, I don't drink no more. I don't do drugs no more. It's some things I don't do no more. Somebody help me up here. I became a new creature. Old things, are all, they're gone. Amen. I ain't telling you I'm perfect, but my Lord, I've got God's word in me. I've got the spirit of God in me, and he brings a change when he comes in. Somebody help me. He's got to have something to work with. He's got to have some word that he can work with to mold and to make. Can I get an amen up in here? Too many people say, oh, they think they can keep on living their old lifestyle. They think they're going they're on the way to heaven. Let me tell you, when you're living that old lifestyle, you're not going to heaven. You've got to be born again. You've got to be changed. You've got to be birthed into God's kingdom. The Spirit of God's got to come in, and I promise you when he does, he begins to make changes in you. The Bible says we are what? The temple of the Holy Ghost. We're the temple of the Spirit of the living God. You are a temple that belongs to God. Somebody else, you don't even belong to yourself no more. You belong to God, and he's making his abode in you. So there has to be a change. Amen. It'd be like coming up in here, y'all. Coming up here, and I just set up a table and say, "Come on, y'all, let's have some beer and some liquor in God's house." We can see that, can't we? Somebody help me up in here. Let's smoke a joint right up here, y'all. Let's put up the table. Come on, y'all. We're gonna smoke a joint. What do you think you're doing? You are the temple of the Spirit of the living God. Somebody help me up in here. You don't need a joint. You don't need a beer. You don't need no liquor. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me. You need the power and the presence of the living God. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. we got to get back to where we need to be. We don't need that no more. We need the power of the living God. We need the power and the presence of the Spirit of the living God. And he'll break all that mess. So you can see it if we did that up in here. But I want you to see that you are that temple. Don't defile the temple. Somebody help me. Praise God. Now we have a light. There's people who have a light that is human light that shuts out God's light. See, that's the problem today. There's light. People got their human reasoning that's shutting out what God really wants to reveal and to show. And I praise God that he's given us these things in the Old Testament, in the Old Covenant, to show us. Amen. Can I get amen up in here? Wow, Lord. It's the light of human reason, y'all, that rejects the light of God's Word. People are so smart, so educated, got to reason everything out, can't receive nothing by faith. Y'all, by faith... I believe Jesus is the Messiah. Yeah. By faith, Amen. I believe he shed his blood. Yeah. By faith, I believe he's by the right hand of, God, of the Father right now interceding yeah. for you and me. Yeah. By faith, I believe his blood cleanses and covers me. Hallelujah. Yeah. By faith, I believe that the spirit of the living God is on the inside of me. By faith, I believe that this is God's word. The Bible says without faith, you can't even please him. Yeah. So I can't reason things out. People's always trying to get, show me. Show me. I don't got to show you nothing. Look around. God has already showed us everything. How do you think we're going to be on a speck of dust or a speck of sand and we got breath and we're living in the middle of nowhere, in space, the only planet that has life on it, the earth, every other, every other place you can't even breathe. How do you think that happens? God shows us in nature, y'all. He's God. Amen. He's given us the, even the air that we breathe. Praise Amen. God. Let me get to this word. I'm getting all over the place. Somebody help me, Lord. In the light of man's human reason, y'all, he begins to invent things. Man invents, invents things out of his own mind, out of his own light that he's getting. A source of light that don't come from God. Somebody help me up in here. He begins to invent things. He begins to, he begins to invent things like the theory of evolution. And that theory had gotten so great that, my Lord, they began to teach our children in schools about evolution. That you actually come from a monkey. Isn't that foolish? My Lord, as a born-again Christian, as someone who's got the spirit of the living God in them, don't you know how foolish that is? 
but people in their own human reasoning. Oh yeah, that's true. Because they are void of the light of God's Word. If they had the revelation of God's word, they would know how man was created. That he didn't come from an ape. That God took some dirt. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Breathe some life into some dirt. And all of a sudden, there's a body. Come on. And he breathed into that body of dirt. And all of a sudden, it got up. The breath of life. You want, to know what, you, know, you want to know about life? See, it's in the Word of God. People are void of the light of God's Word. They don't know. They've got human reasoning. Well, that just can't happen. I can't believe that. I'm telling you this. You better believe whatever God speaks happens. Hallelujah. When He spoke life, Adam got up. And He began to walk. And then God knows, Adam, you need somebody with you. And I got one with me. Praise God. She's wonderful. She's awesome, y'all. She's a good thing. Praise God. Thank you. She's awesome. She's wonderful. She's out if you need somebody. I'm going to make you go to sleep, boy. I'm knocking you out. I'm putting you down back on the ground. I'm pulling something out of you. Hallelujah. Because you've got to have some fellowship. You need some help. You need somebody that's going to be there by your side. You need somebody that's going to help you on this journey. Somebody help me up in here. So when you got a good woman, you want to thank God. Come on. You want to thank God every single day. you got a good woman that's right there to help you in this journey, this walk. Can I get another amen? Amen. Hey, can I get another amen? Amen. Are y'all still with me? Yes. But see, the light of man's human reasoning cannot even understand that. Can't even understand how could God possibly reach into a man and pull out a woman? Because he's the creator of everything. He makes. He molds. When he speaks, it happens. See, man cannot really create anything. Only thing God, man can do is to use what God has already created. God's created everything. We're using what he's created, church. Come on, somebody help me up in here. Y'all give God some praise. Here comes David in the house. God bless you, David. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Man begins to invent things, the theory of evolution. He, he begins to, because of the light that he has from the wrong source, he, he talks about the universal goodness of man. In other words, all men are really good. Can I please tell you all men are not good? It's not true. And that's being spoken today. Well, really all men are good. No, the Bible says there's none good, no, not one. Not one. We all miss the mark, amen? And then you begin, because of the light that man has of his own reason, he, he talks about universal brotherhood, that we're all brothers. You know, we're all brothers and sisters in the flesh. There's no doubt about that. But spiritually speaking, we're not all brothers and sisters. And I'm telling you, the world has a hard time with that. But everybody ain't your brother and sister, spiritually speaking. Those that are your brothers and sisters are those that have been born again. Somebody that you got the same spirit you've gotten, that's the Holy Spirit. And they speak about universal fatherhood. Oh, yeah, God's the father of everybody. Physically speaking, he is. But let me tell you, Jesus looked at some of the scribes and Pharisees and he says, yeah, listen, you of your father, the devil. Somebody help me up in here. So how can you speak universal, even fatherhood? It don't line up with the Word of God. It's because of the light they have. They don't see. Come on, church. You've got to be born again. God can be your daddy, spiritually speaking, when he, when he bought you with a price, when you're cleaned by the blood. Come on, church. When he brings you out of darkness and puts you into his kingdom, then he's your father, spiritually speaking. But why does man invent these things? Because he's rejected the light of the lampstand. He's rejected the light of God's Word. He's rejected Jesus. If you reject Jesus in his word, you have nothing. Can I get another amen up in here? He's blinded. He's blinded to the, he cannot see. He has no vision. He can't see the brazen altar. He can't see the things that we've talked about, the labor. Come on. He can't see the blood of Jesus. He can't see Jesus by the right hand of the Father interceding even right now, church. Because he's blinded to that truth. Can I get another amen? amen? He has no faith in God. He has no faith in his word. So he substitutes reason in, under, in his own understanding. People reason things out all the time because they don't have understanding or revelation of God's word. 
Instead of the blood as the only remedy for sin, here's what happens, y'all. Let me tell you this right fast so we wouldn't further. The only way that can wash your and my sins away is the blood of Jesus, period. Amen. We have to come on. Get a thank you, Jody. Come on, y'all. Give God the glory. Your sins have got to be under the blood. That's one thing my grandma told me a long time ago when I was still in the world living out in sin, doing things I had no business doing. My grandma said, Donnie, you got to be covered by the blood. She wasn't playing she wouldn't play because she knew I wouldn't at the time. She said, you got to be under the blood. you got to be covered with the blood. you got to be under the blood. And I never have forgotten that, y'all. The only way our sins can be forgiven is through the blood of Jesus. Now, instead of the blood as the only remedy for sin, man in his own light, he uses religion. He uses morality. He uses ordinances, education, psychology. None of these things, they may be, some of them may be good in themselves, but none of them can save you, deliver you, or set you free. Being religious don't make you, don't make you nothing but religious. Come on, y'all, that's all it does. I've seen so many religious spirits. You know, we live in a place, there's a religious spirit, y'all. If the Bible read, I had to say, there's a religious spirit. And religion can't save you. Ordinances can't save you. Going through these motions can't save you. Coming to church every day of the week can't save you. Come on. You can come every day of the week. You can come anytime you want. And it won't save you. The only one who can save you is Jesus by his word. Hallelujah. If you want to know about salvation and how to be saved, you get the word of God. He'll show you. Hallelujah. He'll tell you how to be saved, how to be born again in his kingdom. It's all in there. Can I get another amen up in here? Paul says in 1 Corinthians 2.14, the natural man, the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. They are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. The natural man does not understand the spiritual things of God. I've been on my job and I worked at BMW one time. I be talking about the Holy Ghost. People look at you crazy. What are you talking about the Holy Ghost? I had a Muslim come up to me. And, she, and he said, Well, you believe that God lives in you, don't you? I said, I certainly do by the Spirit of the living God. By the Holy Ghost, He lives in me. Amen. He said, Well, I just don't believe that. Then I said, Well, I believe in His Word. Amen. I believe what God's Word says. Amen. The Bible says, His Word says, You are the temple. Of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come on, yes. y'all. It's the Word of God. People who are void of the presence of God, the Word of God of Jesus, don't have any understanding. Can I get another amen? amen. Now notice this. Let's, let's go here. The, the golden candlestick or the lampstand. We're going to go to another thing here with this now. It was fed by the oil in the sanctuary. That thing had to be lit somehow. What was keeping it lit? Everybody say, oh. oh. Y'all say, oh. oh. Exodus 27, 20. Exodus 27, 20 says this, and, and thou shalt command the children of Israel that they bring thee pure old olive. Beaten for the light to cause the lamp to always burn. Oh, my Lord. Boy, I get to look at that I get so excited. Good Lord, I can't understand. What's keeping the light lit? The oil. The oil is representative of who? The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. What's going to keep your light lit? The Spirit of the living God. Y'all, that's why we need to be full of the Holy Ghost. Come on. Be full of the, You got the Word. You got the Holy Spirit. He keeps that Word alive on the inside of you. He keeps you shining bright like a light. Somebody help me up in here now. He keeps that word alive. He makes it alive. That's why I tell everybody, don't rely on a school. Don't rely on a preacher. Don't rely on nobody to be your teacher. Let the Spirit of God be your teacher. He is the best teacher you'll ever get. He will teach you the word. He, Come on, y'all. He came upon people to write the word. And he's the best teacher you could possibly have. I ain't got a problem with school. School's fine. But if that's all you got in school, you ain't got nothing. Come on, y'all. God, to take the school and use it, but you got to have the Spirit of God to be your teacher, to keep that light alive on the inside of you. 
Now, we know the oil was representative of the Holy Ghost, and we know Jesus, the Messiah, he's called the Messiah, he's called Christ. That literally means what? The anointed one. Everybody say the anointed one. Jesus, the Messiah, the Christ, was the anointed one. That's what the word means, the anointed one. Isaiah 61 1 says this the Spirit, and this is speaking about Jesus, that's Isaiah 61 1, says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me. Jesus was anointed by the Spirit of the living God. In fact, I go to this place here. Jesus really did not start his ministry until he come up out of the Jordan River. And the Bible says the Spirit of the living God came upon him. When he come up out of the river being baptized by John the Baptist, John even seen the Spirit of God come upon him. Well, immediately when the Spirit of God came upon Jesus, he went into the wilderness. He went into the wilderness to de defeat somebody for you and me, praise God. He went in there to defeat the devil and praise God, he defeated defeated him. Hallelujah. But he did it by the power and the presence of, a, of the Spirit of the living God. And he's given us an example. If we're going to be victorious, if we're going to be overcomers, y'all, we got to be full of the Holy Ghost. We got to let the Spirit of God rise up within us and come all over us. Come on, somebody help me. Because you're going to face the enemies. That's right, that's right. But it's through the oil of the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. The Messiah. Y'all, we're, like, we're anointed. Yes. Now, let me just show you. We're going to go a little further. Y'all hold hang with me. Acts 10, 38 says this, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And the Bible says when he came out of that wilderness, he, come, he came out. When Jesus went into the wilderness and, and faced the devil, faced the enemy, and I didn't believe that was literal. Somebody help me up in here. When he came out, the Bible says he was full of the power of God. See, nobody don't want to face nothing. And they wonder why they ain't got no power. Uh oh, let me say that one more time. You got to face things, y'all, before you can walk in the power and authority of God's Word. But you can do it. Everybody in here can. It don't matter what the enemy throws, you can walk in power and authority. Amen. We're praying for somebody right now. He said that, said the man said the devil's got his army. God gave me a vision, y'all. I promise you. Y'all. And I spoke that word to him, and I told him, I told him what God showed me. I said, Don't you dare fear. This is what God showed me. He showed me this in a vision. And so I told him, I, I told God, call him up, tell him. He said, do not fear. And then God showed me angels and kept about this person and their church. But the thing about these angels, y'all, they was all facing out. There wasn't none of them facing in. They was all facing out. I mean, completely surrounded. They wouldn't have break in that in, in the arm, not a break. And God was telling me, don't you dare fear. I've got an army and kept about you. It don't matter what the enemy's trying to do or what he thinks he's going to do. He can't do it. Because them angels are on guard. They're watching. And they're just waiting for them orders to come from the Lord. Somebody help me up in here. Come on, church. Praise God. That's the power and the presence of an almighty God. Amen. Now, God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power. And that same anointing, church, the same anointing that came upon Jesus, do you realize that's the same anointing that's on you and I? Yes, amen. Now, I'm not saying the word Jesus by no means, and we're going to make that plain in a minute. I want you to see that. Nobody in here will ever be a little Jesus. Let's mark that. Let's make that plain. We're not claiming that. But we're claiming to be able to walk in the anointing that Jesus walked in because he's the only one who's perfect, pure, and holy. And he did that for us. Somebody help me up in here. You ain't never been perfect, pure, and holy. You never will. Jesus is. Somebody help me now. He's the one who's perfect, pure, and holy. He cleanses us with his blood. And he makes us pure and holy by his blood, by that anointing. Okay? 2 Corinthians 1, 21 says this. Now, the, he, God, which establishes us with you in Christ, has anointed us in God. So look at your neighbor and say, I'm anointed. I mean, see, a lot of you might not think you're anointed. Listen, we all anointed. Every child of God is anointed. To do what God has called us to do. We might not all be preachers. We might not all be teachers. But we're anointed to do something for the Lord. Somebody help me up in here. Can I get an amen? You're all anointed to do what God wants you to do. You just got to do it. It might be what God's called you to do. It might be foolish. But if He tells you to do it, do it. You're anointed to do it. 
You're anointed to do what God has told you to do. I can't do what Fran, what God anointed Fran to do, and Fran can't uh, do what God's anointed me to do. Fran's got an anointing. She's got a flow in that anointing. Fran's a mighty woman of God. She's got that word in her. Amen. God has anointed her to teach. Amen. And to preach and whatever. But see, we all got different anointings up in here. And it all comes from God. To do certain things so the body can come together in unity and oneness. And we get another amen. amen. Now, here's what I want to go to. The golden lampstand also, and you can see it up here. This is playing because it's a good picture. Also speaks to us of Jesus. We talked about that, right? And also, it speaks of the body. And I want you to point this out now. That center shaft, the center, center candlestick, the one that's higher than the others, represents who? Jesus. Jesus. And that represents Jesus, y'all, as the head. That is so important. That's the head. The three branches on the right, the three branches on the left is a part of the head. In other words, it's the body. Everybody say body. So that means by even with this, with this symbolism here that God has given us, is telling us that Jesus is the head and we are the body. The church is his body. Every born again believer. We're his body. And let me just point this out. God ain't looking for two heads on his body. He ain't looking for two or three heads. There's one head, his name is Jesus. There ain't no two-legged pastor. I don't care who he is. I don't care who he claims to be. He's not the head of the body. Come on, church. We are all in the body. Amen. Jesus has always been the head. He always will be the head. There can't be no other head. If you had two heads on the body, he'd be like a monster. That's what happens sometimes. People get a mess because they're trying to take a place that ain't got no business taking. Jesus is the head. We are the body. We are the branches. Oh, I love it. Living branch. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. The lampstand had seven branches. One upright, we just pointed out, it's the center. Three branches on each side. A total of seven. The upright branch we talked about represents Jesus, the head. He's the head of the body. The other coming out of each side represents the members of his body. We are members of his body. Every born again believer. It's like this, y'all. And I love this because I can relate this to this ministry. Jesus is the vine. We are the branches. So he's the vine. We are the branches. Y'all, here's our, this is our scripture for you. This is what God has given us for this ministry. John 15, 5. Everybody say John 15, 5. That's the, for you, this visit, whatever. That's the verse for our ministry. This is how God birthed this ministry, living branch, okay? John 15, 5. I am the vine. Ye are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Without me, you can do nothing. Amen. Can y'all give God a clap of praise for a minute? Let me say this one more time. I don't care who the person is. I don't care how good they think they can preach, how good they can sing, whatever. Without Jesus as the vine, we are nothing. And we can do nothing. All the good that we do, y'all, is because of the vine. It's because of Jesus. It's because he's the head. He's the head of the body. He's the head of us. We belong to him. I like to say we belong to him. He don't really belong to us. We belong to him. He bought us for the price. He paid the price. We ain't paid nothing. We ain't done nothing. He did it all. So he's the, the, he's the vine. We're the branches. Through him, we can produce fruit. Without him, it's like a vine that dries up and die. And it can't produce anything. Can I get one more amen up in here? Amen. Now, six, we know, is the number of man. All through the scripture, you can read that, you can study. But six is the number of man. The six branches are the men, the women, the boys, and the girls that are part of his body. Isn't that awesome? God, don't leave nobody out. There ain't no certain denomination. Let's just straighten that out now. Come on, y'all. There's not a certain denomination that's the bride of Christ. The bride of Christ is made up of every born-again believer. Cleansed by the blood, filled with the Spirit of the living God, brothers and sisters in Him. Young, small, rich, poor, don't really matter. Can I get another amen? amen. Now, here's what we got though. Seven, well, let me point this out. Seven branches, but one lampstand. Notice that, y'all. Seven branches, one lampstand. Seven is the number of completion or perfection. Now, I want you to get this right here. Watch this. So, what we have is this, y'all. All believers, every born-again believer, Jesus being the head, we're the body, every born-again believer, we are united together with Jesus. We're made perfect in Him. Let me say that again. We're made perfect in Him. 
being nourished by the oil of the Holy Ghost. Woo, somebody have heard of that. We're made perfect in Him being, being nourished by the oil of the Holy Spirit. This is why I've seen people, I've seen, I've seen, and I've visited places, and I can tell since I walk into a place, but I, I can see that some places have all word, 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 and they got no spirit. And then I went to places that it's all spirit, 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 and they got no word. I'm telling you, for that light to shine bright and for us to be that what God wants us to be, you got to have the word of God. You got to have the spirit of God. You gotta have the oil of the Spirit of God making that word life, making you shine. Can I get an amen up in here now? Now, now watch this, okay? Now we're nourished, we know that. But we are one in Him, just like that lampstand is one. That's you gotta picture yourself like that, Joe. You gotta picture yourself. You're one in Christ. We're one. Now, remember this: the lampstand received all of its light. From the oil. That's an important statement right there. Because there's people today that are receiving a light from somewhere else. Any kind of knowledge you get, and if it's not a revelation knowledge from the Spirit of the Living God, you don't need to receive it. Amen. And I promise you, there's a lot of stuff that comes across your plate, it didn't come from God. Amen. You know why? I didn't mind the Word. That's why you need to know the Word. Can I get an amen up in here again? So remember, the last man received all of its life from the oil and nowhere else. We receive our light, y'all. We receive our revelation knowledge from the Spirit of the living God who makes that word life. There's nothing new in this book, y'all. There's nothing new under the sun. It's all right here. It's just God giving us the revelation knowledge of it in His time. They don't, none of us know everything in here. No. Come on, somebody. We don't know, don't know about everything in here. So as we progress, as we grow, as we grow from glory to glory, God begins to reveal more knowledge, more, more revelation knowledge of his word. But it's all here. It's all intact. We're just receiving as we grow. Now, we as the body of Christ, we have got to learn to let the light of the glorious gospel shine through us. Matthew 5.14 says this, you are the light of the world. Who is? Yeah. You are. And we're going to go some of this in a minute. Philippians 2.15 says, among whom you shine as lights in the world. So let me tell you this, y'all. This is important when I fix it in. Man, very important. It's the function of the body to shine as the light of this world in the power of the Holy Ghost. It's the function of the body. Now, we're going to shine as lights in this world. And we're shining as lights by the power and the presence of the Spirit of God. Can I get an amen? Y'all just give God a cup of praise. I don't want nobody to see it. It's what I fix the things in for you, okay? And what I fix the things, I'm not taking away from these things, but they've got to be in the rightful place. Everybody said they've got to be in the rightful place. I don't want you to get this. It's not the business of the church to meddle in politics. That's number one. It's not the business of the church to enter the field of secular education. It's not the business of the church to become a school or a college of human secular knowledge. Now y'all stay with me for just a minute. I'm talking about the business of the church. God's body. The body of Jesus, okay? The function, the function of the church, y'all, is not social reform. Okay, we're going somewhere. Y'all just hold on for a minute, okay? The function of the church is not to educate people in sciences. The, the function of the church is not to deal in psychology. The function, come on church, the church is not called to educate, train, or cultivate the natural, unregenerate man. That's not what the church is called to do. What's the church called to do, y'all? The church, its function. The function of the church is to preach and teach the word of the living God. Somebody help me up in here. That's the function. That's the business of the church is to speak and to teach God's word. These other things are good. But that's not what God called his body to do. As a church. Well, I know we're going to get my hands on that. But the function of the church is to equip God's people. Teach them the Word of God. Teach them you've got to be born again. You've got to be saved. You've got to be delivered. You've got to be cleansed by the blood. You've got to be filled with the Spirit of the living God. That's the function of the church. That's the function of the body. Jesus, that's what Jesus went around doing, y'all. Preaching and teaching His Word. Amen. Getting people saved. Getting people born again. Yes. 
Can I get an amen up in here? So you got to teach people. You got to tell people. You must be born again. If Jesus told somebody named Nicodemus who knew the scriptures, you must be born again. It must be pretty important. We've got to feed God's people his word. These other things are good, but in their rightful place. But it's not the place in his church. His body. Because there's no delivering power in none of them. I know people who's went to AAA meetings all the time. And you know what they teach you? One's an alcoholic, always an alcoholic. That ain't what the Bible says. Amen. Come on, y'all. If anybody's going to be concerned about, you know, at one time in my life, I was an alcoholic. Did y'all see that? I, W-A-S, was. I ain't no more. Come on, church. I ain't no more. Please, I'm not. Don't come tell me to some being. You say, I'm always going to be an alcoholic. No, that's wrong. You always going to be a drug user? No, that's wrong. No, I'm delivered. I've been set free. Come on, y'all. I'm a new creature. I've been made a new. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Old things are gone. So don't tell me something. See, see, there's there's things might be fine in the secular world, but I'm talking about in the kingdom of God, y'all. Well, we got power, we got authority. Tell people you can be delivered, you can be set free, you can be made new if you want it. They're gonna get amen up in here. Thank you, Lord. If you want it, if you want it, if you want it. That's a big word. If, if you want it. Got to accept it. You got to receive it. You got the Spirit of God come in and do it. Amen. And if you do that, He will do it because He's no respect of person. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Now, the only spiritual light, here's where we're going, that man can receive today must come through the branches of the true right lampstand for who is Jesus. I want to show you something right here, y'all. I'm going to point something out. Look what Jesus really said in John 9 5. We're almost through, y'all. Hang with me. Jesus said this, he said, as long, he said, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Now that's what Jesus was telling his disciples. He said, as long as I'm here with you, as long as I'm in this world, I am the light of this world. Now notice carefully what he said, y'all, as long, as long as I'm in the world, as a visible person, Oh, good Lord, get this in your spirit. As a visible person, Jesus is not in this world right now. As a visible person, he came 1,900 years ago. He walked on this earth for about 30, uh, 33 years he walked on this earth. In visible form, he's not here. Come on, y'all. In visible form, you want to know where he's at? He's by the right hand of the Father interceding for you and me right now. That's where he's at. He's sitting down on the throne by the right hand of the Father. That's where Jesus is. But he has a body. Yes. Come on, y'all. Come on. He has a body that is here on this yes. earth. Yes. He has yes. made provision. Yes. Good Lord. He knew he was going to go to heaven. He yes. knew he had to sit down by the right hand of the Father. He knew we was going to have to have somebody to intercede for us in heaven. Yes. So he made provision, though. He said, there's a provision. I'm going to provide you. I've given you the spirit of the living God. Every soul, every vessel that belongs to him. Matthew 15, Matthew 5, 14 says this. Ye, you are the light of the world. Amen. Point to your neighbor and say you are. Amen. You are the light. Come on, let me show you this. Matthew 15, 16 says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Here's what I'm trying to point. Here's the point I'm trying to make, y'all. If anybody is going to see Jesus today, they're going to have to see him through me and you. Somebody help me up in here. They're going to see Jesus through the body. That's the only way people are going to see the Lord, y'all. That's why we ought to be acting right. That's why we ought to be full of the Holy Ghost. That's why we ought not be get, letting nobody get on our nerves. Come on, y'all. Suck it up and go on. Somebody help me up in here. Be a Christian. Be just like Jesus. Do what Jesus would do. We are representing Jesus. Everybody is a part of that body. Guess what? You're not representing yourself. Amen. Everything you do, everything I do and everything I say, y'all, I'm representing Jesus. <laughs> So when I'm speaking to people and I'm talking to people, don't you think me, especially as a pastor, ought to watch out how I act or what I say. Come on, somebody help me up in here. I'm representing Jesus. 
And not just me, everybody in here. You part of that body? He's the head. We represent Jesus. The only light people are going to see today, y'all, is coming from his body. Coming from me and you. Only Jesus, somebody might see, is how you act in a restaurant. If somebody ain't serving you right. I promise you, I promise you, you can knock it, you can write it down. If somebody is just being rude to me, serving me, they ain't being a good waitress or waiter or whatever, I mean, just being awful, because, I mean, you can tell, just could care less you be there, I promise you, I'll tip them more than anybody else. Somebody have not been here. I'll tip them more, because I know they probably need it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, touch them. Lord, bless them. I understand what I do, y'all. That's the only life they might see. I said, man, this man must be crazy. No, he ain't crazy. He's just full of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I mean, he, he ain't got no sense when it comes to things of the world. If you were opposite of what the world would do, come on, y'all. Somebody ain't waiting on you good. The world would say, well, let's get screwed. We won't even leave him a tip. That ain't the Christian thing to do. Somebody help me up in here. I'm glad Jesus laid his life down and died for me when I was in sin. Hallelujah. Somebody help me. He reached out and picked me up and brought me out. So the only light a person's going to see, the only thing that they're going to see is Jesus is coming through you and coming through me. Just as the moon reflects the light of the sun, we must reflect the light of the only begotten Son of God. Come on, y'all. The moon ain't got no light. It reflects the light of the sun. Y'all, we're to reflect the light of the only begotten Son of God. And I promise you, if we think about that, we might handle ourselves a little bit different. Can I get amen? amen. Can we stand on our feet and say, God, we go clap and praise. Come on, church. Oh, come on.